It looks like the firmware on my Nano VNA-F V2 is not the latest. It is currently at 0.3.0, .0, and let me just double check on that. So let's do about. And as you can see that uh, it is indeed 0 0.30. .0. And the latest according to SysJoint's website is 0.3.2. So let's upgrade the firmware to the latest. Here is the firmware update procedure for this Nano VNA. If I turn it around, you can see that there are three buttons on the side. If I press the middle button and power it on at the same time, the Nano VNA would enter the bootloader mode. And uh, here is where we can do the firmware upgrade. After entering the bootloader mode, if I plug in the cable here, this is a USB-C cable, and uh, you should see a flash drive appearing on the computer here. And I had already downloaded the Nano VNA's latest firmware from SysJoint's website, and that's the 0.3.2.zip file. Of course, I had already unzipped it. You can see that uh, update.bin. And all I need to do now is to copy this file and uh, paste onto the flash drive, and uh, we should be fine. So now, all I need to do in theory is to power it off and uh, unplug my USB cable. Okay, so now moment of truth. And as you can see, it is uh, updating. Okay, so now it is uh, updated. Let's go back and check on the about. And you can see that the firmware has been updated to 0.3.2. Okay, so let me take a look and look around to see if there's any noticeable changes. Now we're back at the workbench. Let's take another look. First, let me power it on. And you can see that the version is 0.3.2 now. And by the look of it, one thing I noticed immediately is that the font had changed. Now, it is very subtle, but the new font makes it slightly more legible. And according to SysJoint's website, there are also some tweaks in the RF output power to avoid mixer overload induced errors. The left and right search bug when using cursors seem to be fixed as well. So that was the firmware update. Now, I do want to check another item that some viewers brought to my attention while watching the last review video. Namely, when the Nano VNA was in signal generation mode, the output frequency seemed to be a little bit off when measured on my spectrum analyzer. At first, I thought it might just be a firmware issue, but uh, I did some further testing and can assure you that the output frequency was actually accurate. And uh, that was just a result of the wide resolution bandwidth that was set as default, which was 3 MHz. Usually, the resolution bandwidth does not affect the frequency measurement that dramatically, but in this case, I guess it was probably because the output from the signal generator was a square wave instead of sinusoidal, so the error became very pronounced. So let me do a quick demonstration here. And I just turn on my HP 8560-60B, which is humming in the background. And of course, I have also connected the Nano VNA's output to the spectral analyzer. As we can see that currently we're outputting a 1 GHz signal and the output is enabled sitting at 0 dBm. When the HP 856060B first powers on, it defaults to the 2 to 22 GHz frequency band. And the reason I haven't changed it to the correct frequency band is because I want to show you the harmonics generated from the Nano VNA. As you can see, we have harmonics from above 2 GHz all the way to about 8 GHz here. And the reason for this is because the output from the Nano VNA's synthesizer is a square wave instead of being a sinusoidal. Anyway, now let me switch to the 0 to 2.5 GHz frequency band. And now, as what we did last time, let's uh, search for the peak. And you can see that the peak here is marked as 995 megahertz. We know that the frequency we set on our synthesizer is to output 1 gigahertz frequency. 
As I mentioned earlier, this is because the output waveform is uh, a square wave and the resolution bandwidth currently is set up as uh, 3 MHz, so that is not enough to discern the actual signal frequency. So in order to measure the frequency more accurately, we have to zoom in onto the signal. So for that, let's change the center frequency to 1 GHz, and let's change the frequency span to 100 MHz. And now let's change the resolution frequency bandwidth to uh, 100 kilohertz. So now we have a very narrow frequency and uh, now let's uh, find the peak again. Now as you can see we're measuring exactly 1 gigahertz so we know that the output from the nano VNA is actually very accurate. So now we can confirm that there's no issue with the output from the nano VNA's RF synthesizer. And to further confirm the frequency reading, I also fired up my HP5350B microwave frequency counter. So let me unscrew the cable here and move it to the frequency counter side. As you can see that the microwave frequency counter is registering 1 GHz, no problem at all. I hope you enjoyed this short video and be sure to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe so you will be notified for more content like this in the future. I will catch up with you next time.